Glidescope Video Laryngoscopes, designed for first-pass success. The basic technique for successful pediatric intubation with Glidescope Video Laryngoscopy combines direct vision of the patient with views on the video monitor. Look in the mouth to introduce the laryngoscope. At the screen to obtain the best glottic view. Back in the mouth to introduce the endotracheal tube. And finally, at the screen to intubate. It is advisable to use a stylet with the Glidescope video laryngoscope to ensure successful pediatric intubation. Begin by preparing the endotracheal tube, which in this case is shaped by a malleable stylet to complement the unique blade angulation of the Glidescope video laryngoscope. The correctly angled endotracheal tube will have a hockey stick appearance to it. Begin step one with direct vision, looking directly into the patient's mouth. With the patient appropriately positioned, scissor the mouth open and look inside to introduce the laryngoscope. With the Glidescope video laryngoscope in your left hand, introduce the Glidescope into the midline of the oral pharynx, avoiding any sweeping of the tongue. Gently advance the Glidescope until the tip of the laryngoscope is past the posterior portion of the tongue. Then apply a slight lift. Unlike conventional laryngoscopy, the Glidescope video laryngoscope is introduced midline. No lateral displacement of the tongue is required. Step two is performed while viewing the video monitor the entire time. With the Glidescope inserted, look to the monitor to identify the epiglottis. Sometimes a slight withdrawal of the Glidescope is required to reduce the viewing angle and allow the glottis to drop. Then manipulate the scope to obtain the best glottic view. The glottic view is optimized by a combination of advancing or withdrawing the laryngoscope slightly, while increasing the tilt to seat the device in the vallecula or on the posterior surface of the epiglottis to obtain the best glottic view. When the Glidescope video laryngoscope is appropriately positioned, the glottic aperture is centered in the upper third of the video display. This optimal view in the display is achieved using minimal lift force. This provides a wider view and more working space for intubation. The camera position further reduces the effect on the view from blood and secretions in the airway. The video image of the glottis using the Glidescope video laryngoscope typically is a Cormac Lehane grade 1 or grade 2 view. At this point, the user may be tempted to immediately insert the endotracheal tube and try to navigate it through the glottic aperture while continuously looking at the video screen. However, in step 3, it is very important that you look directly at the patient's open mouth, watching the passage of the endotracheal tube to help avoid potential injury to the tonsils or soft palate. The endotracheal tube, which in this case is shaped by a malleable stylet to complement the unique blade angulation of the Glidescope video laryngoscope, is inserted adjacent to the blade under direct vision until the distal tip of the tube is very near the distal tip of the laryngoscope. This relationship is quickly and easily achieved, and only then should you return to looking at the video monitor. In step four, focus on the video monitor as you advance the endotracheal tube. Returning your eyes to the video monitor gives you a view of the glottic aperture and near it, the tip of the endotracheal tube. The tube is then advanced by gradually withdrawing the stylet two to three centimeters as the tube moves forward. Viewing the entire insertion step on the video monitor allows you to quickly and gently rotate or angle the tube using the right hand to redirect as needed. The Glidescope video laryngoscope is also available with a reusable GVL2 blade option for pediatric patients in the 4 to 20 kilograms weight range. The basic technique to successful pediatric intubation with Glidescope video laryngoscopy is the same whether a single-use stat or reusable blade is used. Let's review the basic steps. Begin by preparing the endotracheal tube so it mirrors the unique blade angulation of the Glidescope video laryngoscope. Look in the mouth to introduce the laryngoscope. At the screen to obtain the best glottic view. In the mouth to introduce the endotracheal tube. And at the screen to intubate. Now that we've covered the basics, here are some best practice techniques with specific tips to help ensure successful pediatric intubation. Developmental differences in the airway anatomy of pediatric patients may present challenges when obtaining a view and advancing the endotracheal tube.
A common challenge for clinicians trained in direct laryngoscopy is placing the GlideScope video laryngoscope too deep in the mouth and applying too much lift force. If you're seeing the esophagus instead of the cords, pull the GlideScope back slightly, about one to one and a half centimeters, and then create a slight lift to obtain the glottic view. Proper alignment of the infant patient is another important tip that may help with visualization of the vocal cords. The placement of a shoulder roll provides better alignment in the infant patient, which tends to have a larger occiput. The shoulder roll creates a slight extension, but not hyperextension, of the neck to help facilitate visualization of the cords. One technique for working with the infant that has a small mouth opening is to move the stat over to the left slightly, giving you more space to introduce the endotracheal tube. The endotracheal tube should be placed adjacent to the stat and then advanced into the glottic opening. Another tip is to have the endotracheal tube enter from the corner of the mouth, being very careful that you observe the placement of the endotracheal tube to avoid any trauma to the soft tissue. Once proper ETT placement is achieved, turn the endotracheal tube to the 12 o'clock position, adjacent to the stat, then look at the screen to intubate. In the pediatric patient with a larger tongue, where you are having difficulty placing the GlideScope video laryngoscope midline, you may want to turn the GlideScope and enter the mouth at a perpendicular angle, without sweeping the tongue. Once you get around the base of the tongue, turn the GlideScope back to its original 12 o'clock position, then look at the screen to obtain the best glottic view. Finally, if you are having difficulties advancing the endotracheal tube, because it's getting hooked up anteriorly at the glottic opening, try turning the endotracheal tube slightly to the right. Then carefully remove the stylet and advance the tube again, ensuring that you're holding the tube in place as you're removing the stylet. GlideScope Video Laryngoscopes, your go-to device for pediatric airways.